It's definitely not a secret that uh, buying your first camera can definitely feel a bit overwhelming. However, you've just clicked this video, which tells me that you're probably like interested in Sony cameras or that you're maybe just uh, interested in uh, ginger guys. Jokes aside, then you are in total luck, my friend. You see, for the last 10 years almost, I've been using Sony cameras and I've especially been specializing myself in like these entry level APS-C Sony cameras. With other words, I honestly feel that I can help you here. However, the budget of you guys watching, it might vary. But fear not, in this video, we're gonna dive into multiple different Sony cameras. We're gonna talk about their strengths and then, you know, not strengths, you say that, their weaknesses, you know. And by the end of this video, you'll know exactly what Sony camera is the perfect fit for you and why. All right, so if you're on a total budget and you want to get something really cheap, then I think like a decent camera might be the Sony Next 5 or the Sony Next 7. Next 5 is like a 40 megapixel APS-C camera and the Next 7 has 24 megapixels. Both these cameras can film full HD. However, in my honest opinion, I think that this might be a little bit too a budget. And if you can, I would suggest that you go a little bit higher. And then my recommendations would be the good old Sony A6 300. Now you could go for the A6000, but if you can, the A6 300, it is like the same sensor. However, the A6 300, it can film 4K footage. And the A6300 is a legendary camera. I started my whole career on the A6300. It's really good. It has a 24.2 megapixel APS-C sensor. It can film 4K footage up to 30 frames per second. And I actually have it here. Wait. It's um, not this one. This one. This is the Sony A6300. It's more fun to when I can point at it, you know? Now, if you want to get that super slow motion footage, you can get 120 frames per second, but in full HD. Now, it's definitely not perfect. It lacks IBIS, which means, you know, in-body stabilization. So if you want to get smooth handled footage, I suggest that you pair it with a like lens that has stabilization. Also, for some silly reason, the flip screen, it is just like this. I mean, this is... I, I never liked <laughs> this, but I mean, for what you get, I think you can get it like used for good money. And for that, it is like, it's great. It's still relevant to this day and age, and I would definitely recommend it. Now, if you could get a little better camera, then I would actually recommend the Sony, where is it? The Sony A6 400. This is like even more legendary camera than A6 300. This is a great little camera. Now, essentially this is the same almost the same camera, it has the same sensor, all the specs are same. Now they do claim that they, like they've done some updates to like the colors in it, so the color sciences should be like a little bit better. In my honest opinion, I didn't really like really <laughs> see that much. There might also be that the autofocus is a little bit better, I don't know. Essentially this is like kind of the same camera. However, it is a little bit newer and it has like this flip up screen right now, which is pretty nice. So you could see yourself when you're vlogging. And this is this is much better than the other thing that which couldn't take all the way up. And this camera, this is honestly what I personally built like my career on. I love this camera. Many of my best photos to this date are shot on this little camera right here. So I absolutely do recommend it. Now, is it perfect? Absolutely not. As with the A6300, it does not have like IBIS or uh, it, it's only 8-bit color, so it's not the best if you wanna like color grade or anything like that. These are also equipped, I don't even have these batteries here. Do I have batteries here? Yeah, these are equipped with these small batteries. Um, I'm not a huge fan of these batteries, but I mean, you, you just, if you have a bunch of them, you're totally fine. I just bought like 10 or something, like <laughs> a load of uh, third-party batteries and always carry them with me in my backpack, so I do, to uh, yeah, just keep that in mind. But all in all, the A6400 and also the A6300, these are great hybrid cameras, which means that you can, like if you're into photo and video like myself, this is definitely a like valid choice today. And I'm sure you can get it for a pretty decent deal if you look for a used one. This is something to consider. Now, another cool little budget camera that you can get is the ZVE. This also boasts the same APS-C sensor, the 24.2 megapixel APS-C sensor as the A6400 and the A6300. So essentially, like, it is kind of the same. However, what they've done to this is that this camera is more focused towards video creation and content creation. So if you're focusing more on video and you not care as much about photo, then this is definitely something to consider. It is a little bit smaller than the A6400, which is nice. I mean, these are already really small cameras, but if you like want even smaller things, then the ZV-E10 could be 
a good choice for you too. Now the reason also is smaller, it lacks a viewfinder. So you, there's no viewfinder here. And I really like when I'm taking photos to use the viewfinder. It is not necessary. You have a screen, but it is it is nice. So that is why one of the reasons why I prefer the A6400 for photography. However, the ZV-E10, it has some effects and some features these cameras do, do not have, like these content creation features. Like I think it had like this active steady shot in this camera, which helps, you know, stabilize the footage. It's not IBIS in it, but you could get a little bit stable footage. You also had like this soft skin effect and product showcase mode and some other cool things. And another thing you get is a very angle screen. This personally, I like so much. This is a little bit of debate. Some people, they do prefer a screen like this. Personally, I don't. Like as a content creator and a photographer, I just, I like this a whole lot. When you're taking low angle shots, seeing what you're doing like this, really nice. And also just being able to flip the screen like this. And like when you're vlogging, fully seeing you like this, it's so nice. And this you can find used for a pretty decent price. And it's definitely a great little budget friendly camera for you if you're looking to get into Sony. Now there is actually an APS-C camera that is by far the best APS-C camera that I've ever tried. It is so good. However, before we dive into that, I want to like, I want to touch a little bit on a few full frame cameras because I do think that this video wouldn't be complete unless we talk a little bit about full frame cameras as well. However, this is not going to be like a full frame versus APS-C, but you know, when it comes to Sony cameras, the APS-C models, they are like smaller and cheaper. And then all of the lenses for the APS-C cameras that they sell, they are also cheaper. So the full frame system is like just more expensive to start with. So if you are like excited about full frame cameras and you want to get into that, that instead of the APS-C, then the a good little like starting choice could be the Sony a7 III. That is like a really legendary camera. It was so popular back in the day. I think it boasts like a 24 megapixel full frame sensor. You could film 4K footage up to 30 frames per second. It's a good hybrid camera, so it's like nice for both photo and video. It does, however, only have 8-bit color, so it's not like the best for like when it comes to color grading and all of that stuff. However, it does have a like IBIS, a five axis input stabilization, which is really nice. So if you also put a lens on it that also has a stabilization, you can get some pretty stable handheld shots. Now, in my opinion though, this is just like my opinion, you can take it with a grain of salt, then I would honestly like for the price, and like for the specs the a7 III has, I think I would rather just go for the a6400. That's that's just, that's me. Like you can get it for cheaper and then you can buy some better glass as well. But you do whatever you want to do. Another camera I think is great is the Sony a7 IV, the updated version of the a7 III. That is a fantastic little camera that has been really fun for me to use. Now we're getting a little bit more expensive, but then you have a 33 megapixel full frame sensor. That camera can film 4K footage up to 60 frames per second. It has 10 bit color, which is a, like great. And it's also the camera that I'm filming on right now. It's this camera that I'm filming here. It is my main camera for many reasons at the moment, and I use it a whole lot. I love this camera. It's a fantastic like a hybrid camera, but you're now getting into a little more expensive territories. But if you can find it used, then I do highly recommend it if the full frame system is something that you are going for. Now, another camera that was released the other day as the A7C2. This is basically a smaller version of the A7 IV. It has all the same like specs and sensors. However, it is now a, like equipped with Sony's latest autofocus technology, which is insane. Sony's newest autofocus technology is fantastic, and that camera has it there. However, now we're getting into a little bit more expensive camera, and that's something to keep in mind. But one thing I think is good also to just think about is what do you want to do in the future? I was talking to one of you guys in the community, and you, you said uh, that you wanted to buy Sony a7C2 because you know that in the future you want to go more into full frame, and you already had some APS-C lenses. And the cool thing about Sony is that all Sony lenses, whether it's APS-C lenses or full frame lenses, they have what's called E-mount. So they work together. So you can use an APS-C lens on a full frame camera. And you can also with the a7 IV and the other full frame cameras, the a7C2, you can put them in APS-C mode, mode. So you can use them as an APS-C camera. So if you have already a bunch of lenses and you know that in the future you want to get more like uh, more into full frame, but you don't uh, maybe have the budget at the moment because full frame lenses are much more expensive, then that is something that you can 
you know, do. It's always good to plan ahead and think what you're going to do in the future. But I just want to lay out that these are the options. And then one more option I want to tell you about the camera that I personally like a whole lot, especially if you're into filming, is this camera right here. This is the Sony ZV-E1. It is absolutely fantastic. It's basically the same camera as the legendary Sony A7S III, which is a fantastic film camera. It can film 4K footage up to 120 frames per second with like next to no crop. Also, all the camera that we've been talking about up to this point, they are all suffering from, you know, this pretty bad rolling shutter, like a jello effect, which when you pan around, you the lines come all wobbly. But this camera, because this is the a A7S III sensor, it, it has a very minimum of that, which is really nice, because that's usually only what you get in higher-end cinematic cameras. But this one, you're good. However, just like the ZV-E10, the ZV-E1 is also focused more on the like video aspects. So if you're also wanting to get into photos, then that would not really be my uh, suggestion to you. However, this summer Sony released an APS-C camera that in, is, in my opinion, so good. That is the Sony A6, here it is, Sony A6 700. This camera is fantastic. It's basically like a mini FX30, which is the most budget cinema camera Sony has to offer. This is like APS-C cinema camera. It's also, by the way, an option if you want to like get more into cinematography. This could be one thing for you. However, this is also a photo camera. So you have an IPS, you can film 4K footage up to 120 frames per second. However, there is a crop, there is a like IPS in it, so it's a stabilized inside. You have also now these big Sony lens, no, where it is, <laughs> there are all, ba no batteries here. Wait, wait, let me see, I have, you have these here. You have these big batteries now, which is great. I do like this a whole lot. I've been filming, this is the second video I'm filming here today, and both the A7 IV and the ZV-E1 has these big batteries, and I thought, think they're like only at 70% at the moment, and I've already filmed a bunch. Now, if you take a look at the A7 IV, you now also get this little front wheel right here, which is also really good. So you have more options when it comes to just switching around the settings. Really, like I'm a big fan of the A7, a6700. However, it is of course more expensive than the good old A6400 and I think for a lot of you guys that are just, just starting out and you're just dipping your toes into both photo and video and you're not sure how like <laughs> how heavy you want to go in it and how much you, money you want to spend in, then I think that the sweet spot might actually be the good old Sony A6400. However, my thought process and the way that I think when I'm buying a new camera, it's a little bit different from most. And when I tell people about it, they get a little bit surprised. But in this video right here, I'm spilling all the beans on that matter.